for the presentations. First of all, I request Mr. S. Prabhakar, Senior Vice Chairman of the Bar Council of India, to facilitate this occasion. Honesty and patience 
for the right weapon and to concur with our Lord's view that for a person who faces a false allegations, these two weapons will always stand by him to prove his innocence and no one can override the truth. And I would like to add that it is we, the lawyers, who has to advocate for their innocence and we have to duty towards it. The Honorable Justice, Mr. Justice Mildura Patkar, was one of the renowned judges of the Bombay High Court. And the Lord Jesus has explained the feelings and trauma and one who undergo in such a situation and Justice Patkar has expressed his feeling through words and she brings those emotions in the eyes of the readers. And Lord Jesus, through these books, brings the hardship that turmoil faced by the judicial officers from the both the public media and as well as from the society in such circumstances <coughs> where near and dear wants to face such allegations. We must also appreciate our Lord's courage and bravery for being a woman judge facing and badly battling against all the hardships. That's true. Their own husband is falsely implicated in such allegations. But still carry on all judicial works and administered justice even during such time. It is not that easy for anyone to face such a situation. Especially when they are in such a position in the limelight, as a reader, we can understand how harsh it would be to receive an information that her husband was implicated in such a false allegations during the 29th wedding anniversary. I take this opportunity to appreciate Honorable Justice Mirdula Patkar strong mind, courage and willpower with which she overcome these tough situations. <laughs> Our Lord Chief Justice, Honorable Justice Prakash and the respected Jack Sakravarti has done a fabulous job of translating this masterpiece for us. It is not that easy to put the same emotion which the author brought in her original words, but here our Lord Jesus have conveyed the emotions to the readers the same way the author expected to. I have to say that this book is being released at the right hour as we are able to witness and increasing the trend in the false sexual allegations. As several cases, sexual allegations ends up in getting quashed and discharged. This book addresses concerns where a person who was a renowned personality, a public figure in media industry, being falsely implicated in a sexual allegation complaint that the complaint gets exaggerated by the media and its related consequences and how these happenings affects the minds of the accused and his family members. Friends, I feel this high time that we will all understand the concept of the victimology and criminology and this book with its narration shows the struggles and hardships faced by the family of such innocent persons and especially when a family member is in the highest constitutional post. But at the same time, it is my duty to mention here, I appreciate the, the judicial system. Why I am seeing this? I have handled a number of cases, particularly the compulsory one retirement, one the retirement, particularly in the judicial system. If any incident happens 
even the district judges, immediately the compulsory intervention is given. When we are challenging it up to Supreme Court, but if any person is facing this type of issues, whether will it get the same situation, I do not know. The Honorable Justice P. N. Prakash, the Honorable Justice Arun Vengesh, the Honorable Justice Jai Chandran has to think it over. The members of the bar, in the same circumstances, we are facing the lot of problems. The opening of our letters of the book would clearly convey what would be the mindset of the accused who is being implicated. Our Lord should, the Patkar has expressed in a stronger sense through her words where readers will be able to understand the feelings in the minds of who faces such allegations at the time. The book actually reminds us for the criminal jurisprudence runs on the principle presumption of innocence. And this presumption is the backbone of the criminal jurisprudence. In our country, why this becomes to so relevant now is that because these days as a member of the bar, we are able to see lots of cases with the sexual harassment allegations and especially these cases are being registered under the special enactments. When these cases are being taken up for trial or when in fact there is an instance of pain, I feel that these principles of innocence, it lost. It may be because of the statutory restrictions, but it is also because of the fact that there is some societal pressure in these type of cases. That is the external influences like media or views of thoughts of the public. I feel these are one of the reasons why bails are being denied in the lower judiciary at the grassroots, which ultimately leads to filing of the cases before the constitutional courts. Indeed, the statutory restrictions are to protect the victims and to bring the accused to justice. But sometimes this special enactment itself is being misused by a few for their own specific personal agendas. And I feel it is the honest upon us as a lawyer and members of this tradition to see that these special enactments are used in the right way as expected by its drafters. I would like to remind all of us that we as a lawyer should not be carried away the societal, societal thoughts or views of the media or views of the society. It is an important that we have to see what is the case and material available in the case. As I said earlier, it is the duty of the lawyers to assist the court with all possible manner so that ultimate justice is served. With I conclude by quoting Tirupural the universal book, It means that complete justice is achieved when investigating intentionally, leading fairly, without undue favor, by analyzing and acting in the right manner, this would constitute ultimate justice. With that being, Said, I thank all the dignitaries the opportunity has given to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request Honorable Mr.